Today we have a conversation with Ricky Perone, president of Perone Construction, and Jacqueline Mazur, who is the vice president of business development. And Perone Construction is known in the Sarasota and surrounding areas for building absolutely magnificent, one-of-a-kind custom waterfront homes. So we talk about the fun, exciting elements of finding your home site, choosing finishes and fixtures, and bringing your magnificent vision to life. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this conversation with my friends Ricky and Jacqueline. Well, thank you guys for joining today. This is going to be a really exciting conversation for me and for our audience for sure, because building a custom beautiful luxury home waterfront homes typically for you guys is just like a pinnacle experience to enjoy in life so we're really excited about doing a deep dive to learn more about this process well, yeah it's a pleasure thanks for having us yeah thanks for having us robert <clears throat> of course so i mean maybe we could just start at the beginning in terms of like how the process begins because you know I, I think that the first step would be finding a choice piece of land perhaps which is something that we know a bit about on our side but it's a little bit you know challenging these days you know you, you kind of do have to wait for like the type of homes that that you're typically building like these really choice pieces that just don't come up you know all the time and so you really have to be proactive to seize those opportunities so i mean maybe are there some tricks or things that come to mind to talk about in terms of like sourcing the right spot to build your magnificent custom home <laughs> yeah well you know um we, we building a custom home is is such a f you know fun process we we really like to have um, you know, really get to understand our clients, you know, what, what they're looking for, you know, as, as early as possible. So, you know, and we're typically getting involved when, when we are looking for land. Um, Jackie uh, is often dealing directly, you know, with the clients and, and putting feelers out in the community. Um, you know, right now that's especially important um, to, to help our clients find those properties. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Well, it's fun because I get to tap into the relationships that I have with a lot of your agents here at Preferred Shore. And whenever we do have a client approach us, uh, it's actually the smartest time to approach a builder, uh, you know, for your vision is even when you're looking for land. And most people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. um, and just think about having us as your advocate and an extra set of, you know, ears to the ground of what land might become available in, in today's market. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely insane, as you know. I mean, your agents probably have a long list of buyers and uh, a shallow listing pool to choose from. Right. So there have been a lot of off-market transactions occurring. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I find it fun. The hunt, it's, it's a challenge. Um, <laughs> learning what our clients are looking for and then taking my history of growing up in Sarasota and my familiarity with the neighborhoods and understanding what might be coming available or even just calling a homeowner and saying, hey, would you be willing to entertain an offer? Sure. Uh, so having that extra set of boots on the ground early on really can, you know, expedite the process and it getting them closer to their dream. It, it certainly can. And of course, good luck comes to the prepared. And I know that you guys are very proactive and just have this amazing reputation for building these stunning homes that are just truly one of a kind. So, you know, that I'm sure does help with in terms of your network and things to know of some of these opportunities or, or get some of the phone calls from the local real estate, you know, realtor community in advance whenever these choice pieces are coming up. So, so that's obviously a, a huge part of the process, but then, you know, next, um, maybe, you know, what, what is the next step for the customer once they've decided that they want to create something that's just stunning and unique, but maybe don't have a whole lot of inspiration as to what that could be or what's possible. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know, in a, in a general sense, uh, we, we understand the, um, our clients uh, program what they're looking for in in the property what they're looking for in their home so mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to you know marry those two things up um, as we're looking for property you know once we've sort of uh, zeroed in you know on that property um, there's a whole you know there's a there's a whole process depending on the property of you know due diligence that we have to uh, dive into mm -hmm. um, Jackie helps our clients out a lot with that um, I do as well um, but, you know, with that 
we, we, we sort of like, one of the things I really like to do early, especially because I'm eager to get into the creative side of it, right, <clears throat> is um, start to, you know, t um, start to involve, you know, um, the other creatives who are going to be part of the project. Um, you, you know, the architect is the, is the uh, mm -hmm. uh, main one of those, of course. Um, so, you know, we're, uh, we're bringing, um, you know, we're setting up those interviews, uh, with, um, with the architects, uh, early on so that the, so that that person's brought on board so that they can begin to, um, develop the conceptual plan for the property, which mm -hmm. I really like to do during due diligence. It's, sure. it's, it's great for a number of reasons. One, you know, you kind of, uh, get a lot of questions answered during that time. But my favorite part of it is you get excited about the project, right? right sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really when the vision begins to unfold. And so now if you think about it, because most people are in this mindset where they enlist an architect, they've you know, done their homework, they really have honed in on a particular style, because most architects uh, you know, tend to have their, their genre, yeah, their, mm -hmm. flavor. Their, their flavor, exactly. <laughs> um, but it would be surprising to hear that the, truthfully, if you bring your builder on early on, you know, in the acquisition of land, but also at the same time that you enlist your architect or even rely on your builder to, to offer suggestions of, uh, professionals that they have, you know, seen successful outcomes from and, and work well with. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the best place to start. But then you really get to dive into to the exciting part. I mean, think about it. You're at this stage in your life where you've arrived. You've mm -hmm. finally gotten to this place where you get to dream up and not only dream up your dream home, but create this space that you're going to live out your days that is unique to you, your needs, your desires, your goals, your family, you're building generational wealth. Mm -hmm. um, many of our clients actually have come to us and they've built three, four, five custom homes already, but they're moving to Florida or yeah. maybe they're in a different stage of their life where, you know, they want to, you know, build a home that's more age appropriate. You know, maybe they're not in <laughs> their, their thirties, forties and out boating every single weekend. Maybe they're looking, you know, to install an elevator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of my favorite uh, parts of getting getting to know our clients and getting to work with them is is like really getting to understand that vision because it's always it's so different from client to client and of it's course. so yeah. it's yeah. it's um, you know it's so unique and the more you talk to talk to them about it the more cr you know creative the ideas become ar around accomplishing their vision for their property absolutely so it's, it's really fun yeah well you have a very impressive roster of clients who are who are you know of course extremely accomplished in a in a diverse range of fields and you know i'm i'm sure that it must be um really fun to work with some of these people who are i mean i i know that if if i were in that type of position i would appreciate the opportunity to see how these people have become very effective in their various careers and, and in life and you know i'm sure that they apply some of those same disciplines whenever it comes to taking on the project of building a home yeah so um you know one thing is i'm, I'm curious just in in general do most of your customers when they approach you do they have pretty specific visions of what they're wanting or or is it do they kind of go through a process with you to see what's possible and go from there? Or? Yeah, I, that's a really good, that's a really good question. Um, you know, to, to take us, you know, to take a step back, you know, our clients are all, you know, they're very, uh, I, I say that one thing that's consistent among them is, is that they're very busy in their personal and professional lives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, while they're, you know, while they're all ex very excited, you know, f to, to get this process rolling and to partake in it, um, you know, each one, you know, approaches it, you know, very differently. So, mm -hmm. you know, we kind of tailor our business to, to, um, you know, to approach each project the way our clients want to approach them. Sure. Um, when it comes to, when it comes to the vision though, um, I will say that, um, there's different, um, there's different levels of, of, um, of, of understanding of what they really want to achieve in their project. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we have some that the idea is fully baked, right? They know exactly what they want. Um, 
and uh, you know um, we we then help work out the details. If uh, we we we're working with a client right now, uh, really uh, neat people, um, and they they uh, literally didn't understand what architectural style they were they were looking <laughs> at they, they were looking at architectural styles that span the entire gamut of what what's available out there <laughs> right and um you know jackie and i had early conversations about it and it was really and i really like i hadn't experienced that before mm. and i really uh liked the challenge of of getting in like kind of getting into their heads and and really understanding what they wanted to achieve we we shared we shared a lot of imagery back and forth i know you know who i'm talking about we shared <laughs> a lot of imagery back and forth and um we spent a lot of time talking to them about it and we toured um toured different homes we and um we we really started to zero in and just in the past week or so, um, I'll let you you kind of finish up. Just in the last week or so, they 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 landed on um, what they want to do as far as architectural oh, style, fantastic. and they're so excited about starting on this. Project. Did it did it turn out to be like a fusion of sorts? Or? Yeah, <laughs> that's actually that's a good way to put it because what we're seeing a lot um, nowadays is, is more of a fusion. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it used to be where different architectural styles had their own boxes. You had traditional, you had modern, you know, you had Mediterranean, and now you're seeing as people's needs in the world changes and, and the flu, you know, how fluid we are with, you know, work and home life, mm -hmm. you're seeing all that evolve with it. And so when they came to us and they couldn't clearly define what they had in their heads of, of what that looked like, a lot of times people will say things like, you know, I, I like modern, but I don't want it to be too cold or too sterile. Sure. Um, I like British West Indies because it has that, you know, tropical vibe and it suits the lifestyle and living in Florida with big, you know, outdoor breezy spaces and sunshine. Mm -hmm. But how do you meld the two? And so, you know, after working with this client, it was so much fun to just see that aha moment, that light bulb mm -hmm. go off when they really walked into spaces because they had this <laughs> preconceived notion of what modern was. Yeah. And um, you are seeing a lot of it proliferate there, our shoreline of that white, you know, box looking structure with lots of glass. Yeah, which and wasn't what they wanted. <clears throat> exactly. They want it to feel mm -hmm. more homey. Um, mm -hmm. And they kept saying warmth and wood and and so when you meld the two you look at a, a new evolution of architecture that you're starting to see and i've been kind of referring to it as a florida or tropical modernism okay. where it, it composes all the the favorable elements of both architectural styles mm -hmm. but unique to our environment and our coastline and mm. the weather that we experience and you know the accessibility to the water that we have yeah i think <laughs> and and i of course, haven't seen any of the renderings or concepts for this particular project, but I, I have seen things moving that direction a bit more myself. And it and it is different from the coastal contemporary, which is, you know, something that that we've been seeing a bit more uh, or, or around here lately, which I, I do like. But it is different in a in a pretty significant way. How it is warm, but with those same clean lines that you get in modern. So yeah, can't wait to see how that turns out. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're excited. We're really excited about it. <laughs> yeah, people like to, you know, have their homes featured on magazines to showcase them, but at the end of the day, they live in them. You know, right, it's, it's not going to be that magazine <laughs> shoot the second that they turn the key. And, you mm -hmm. know, and, and so we, we want to understand that when we meet with our clients, we try and delve into, uh, you know, what's important to them. Do, is it, irritating that their, you know, seven-year-old throws their backpack on the floor, they come in from work, I mean, from school, gosh, my seven-year-old, I wish I could put him to work, but, uh, you know, uh, but anyways, you know, what does that mean? How does that translate into, okay, is that going to be a mud room? Is that going to be, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's an evolution, you know, and it's a process and it's fun, uh, just collaborating, uh, you know, gathering inspiration photos, right. whether it's through, you know, Pinterest or Howls or, and, and just sharing those with the architect and then mm -hmm. collaborating cohesively on a design team is, is the most effective way to, you know, expedite your project and get right. into your dream home. Yeah, well, one one thing I heard that sounded really great to me is that you actually toured some homes with this particular client just to kind of gain gain their 
insights on how they feel about certain things. And so, you know, I, I would say that, that there's a lot of pride in the community of, of Perone homeowners. And we even have a, a home for sale right now for $10 million on Freeling on the north end of Siesta Key that's a Perone home. And we're very proud to advertise it as such. And, and that, to me, makes it easier for us to do our job and market it. And, and yeah. that gives us a lot of confidence. So um, so that said, um, you know, since your, your owners that have built with you are, are, you know, the ones I've met for sure are very passionate passionate about their prone home and they love their prone home are, are they are are they sometimes open to having you bring you know current clients through to see to just have a look at their house or how, how do you tour homes with yeah it's exist- <laughs> a good question yeah. you know uh, I, I will say you know each of our each of our clients um ha- has 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 allowed us, you know, to, to do that. Um, we have great, you know, relationships with our clients. A lot of them, you know, we take care of their homes after they're completed, uh, mm-hmm. through our, through our home maintenance company that we have. Um, um, so we have, you know, we have that opportunity. I will say I, I, um, I, tr- uh, try not to you know bother them with that unless it's you know very it's understandable important. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you know we're, we're, we're a custom home builder we don't you know we've never um we've never built the same house you know twice mm-hmm. uh, i mean sometimes they don't even really rhyme with each other yeah too much. they're, 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 they're not even yeah. very uh <laughs> they're not they're, yeah they're not even very uh similar at all um yeah each each home we build is designed from scratch so you know that uh that because we don't have a you know a model uh we we don't have this opportunity um to tour you know um people through something that that we own but sure but just other other properties that are on the market and things you can kind of go through and yeah yeah Yeah, we have we have uh we have uh clients that that allow us to do that which is very kind of them yeah that's really nice so I'm curious to understand a bit more about, you know, and I'm just imagining if I if I were in this process, you know, of course, the the, the details, I mean, after you've worked with your architect, you've kind of de- designed the whole concept and the floor plan and, and you have the schematics of what the facade's going to kind of look like and things. So, you know, what what are you working on next when it comes down to like, you know, finishes, fixtures? I know these days there's a lot of technology in homes that's really exciting. You know, how, how do you start to move through? through that process once you've got the big picture stuff out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jackie, do you, you want to take this one? Because this is <laughs> part, part, partially your wheelhouse. <laughs> well, uh, I love working, you know, firsthand with the clients once we get to this stage because we, we operate on a concierge level where uh, at Perone, you know, we have some incredible construction management professionals on our staff mm. and our field you know uh, professionals support our office staff and vice versa but in the office uh, we get to grab hold and start creating finish and selection schedules uh, you know I, I go as far as you know escorting them taking them to showrooms setting up those appointments uh, taking their inspiration photos and collaborating with the design team because most of our uh, owners you know they bring on an architect a landscape architect and oftentimes an interior designer and you know on the rare occasion if they're feeling bold they they might take that on themselves doing the interior design but (laughs) it is there are a lot of choices to be made Mm -hmm. throughout a home i mean everything down to how you know the weight of a doorknob feels when you open that door i mean think about how many times you interact with an interior door on Mm -hmm. a daily basis but people overlook what does that feel like? Mm-hmm. What, you know, what does it sound like? Is there a sound attenuation? So being on the construction side, we have that experience that we can lend to them throughout that selection process and kind of give advice and pointers to, to guide them. By the end of the day, mm. um, the excitement lies when they get to go through and they come and I see that email or that text or yeah. phone call come through and they, they've made their selection, they're extremely excited about it (laughs) and then you move on to the next and it just builds Mm -hmm. off of one another and it's it's an exciting process absolutely well and even though i'm of course in the real estate business myself i still feel like there's so much 
that I don't know what I don't know about when it comes to, you know, the choices that, that you make in this process, which of course are all very exciting choices, but you know, how, how do you, yeah, I mean, maybe if it, if you could walk us through some, cause some of those decisions, cause I obviously know about like basic finishes, fixtures. I love that you mentioned talking about like the weight of a doorknob and the way that it feels and sounds and things, but you know, what else, what else are, are some big choices? Cause again, you know, when it comes to technology and things, you don't even know what's possible hardly. And, and I'm sure there's, you know, lots that, of, <laughs> that would be Ricky. He, this, he owns so many toys as you know he would call him but man he is on point when it comes to the latest you know and greatest in technology and smart home um so yeah (laughs) yeah there's you know it's 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 interesting because i would say that you know uh, uh, there's a good portion of our clients that are like really interested in that stuff. And there's mm-hmm. a good portion, uh, you know, of our clients that that um, sort of look at it and are, are a little bit worried about, you know, how how complicated some of this gets. That's so that's what I like to, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I like to do is kind of, you know, be, I, I like to uh, put um, people in a position where they're able to experience it for themselves and see how it Mm -hmm. works for themselves. You know, there's so many things that are um, available. I mean, you know, home automation is, is nothing new. I mean, we've been doing it for, you know, I think decades now. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, obviously there's, there's a, there's a lot that's available, you know, to our clients when it, when it comes to that sort of thing, you know, pretty much every system on, on a home, you know, can be automated, but, um, you know, it's, it's the little things, I I would say it's the, it's the little things, you know, one of the things that I think we, that we have, um, that, uh, a lot of people just can't, you know, a lot of contractors just can't offer is, you know, through the projects that we've been in, get to be involved with, you know, we're involved with the best of the best projects in our area, sure. you know, and mm-hmm. because of that, we get to work with some really, you know, talented, um, architects, interior designers, landscape architects, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, these people are, you know, the, the best of the best in their, in their fields. Mm-hmm. And so we soak all that in. We, we yeah. like to absorb all that like, with like a sponge. You know, what what are they, you know, bringing to the table? What new technology? So, you know, one of the great things is, you know, we get to, we get to you know, know about all these things. I was, um, we're working on a, um, on a project right now. And uh, I was talking to the, uh, I was talking to the architect yesterday about uh, an elevator that he was putting into, into the home. And it's a modern mm-hmm. home, very, very modern. And, uh, and I, and I said to him, I, um, be, uh, because of a new product that we had been exposed to and, and have installed at this point on, on two recent projects, mm-hmm. I said to him, y- you know, that, um, these commercial style, you know, elevators are available now. So where you don't have mm-hmm. to have, a, basically two doors on an elevator, uh, you've got yeah. one sliding door, just like you would have on, sure. on, and I said, it looks really great in these, um, you know, very modern homes, sure, it's something yeah. you consider. And he looked and I sent him a package on it. He called me back an hour later and he was like, so incredibly thankful that I had shared with the, this That's, with him. It was, you know, brand new to him. Right. So, you know, when it comes to technology or products that are available, um, there's, there's so much more than we have the ability to get into here today. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the sky's kind of the, the limit with that stuff. What I will say is, you know, we, we have, you know, really great, um, experience, you know, implementing some of these things, mm-hmm. but we also, you know, just have access and knowledge to, to a lot of things that we, that we like to share with our clients and see if they're interested in it. Yeah. See if they want to know more about it. Right. So, um, I was just curious, like some of the architectural features inside the home, I mean, mm-hmm. is, is that all dealt with at the architect level early on, or does some of these things kind of like get added on with well, the interior yeah. designer? Or? That's what that I was going to say. I was, I was going to also preface that with, you know, a lot of these things need to be taken into consideration in even as early as the, you know, schematic design phase before we even start getting into you know, hiring structural and mechanical, you know, the, the engineers, Mm -hmm. um, because you need to make a space for it. So if you are looking to use a commercial style elevator, you know, you've got to think about the hydraulics, what goes behind that. You've got to leave room for that. Uh, same with smart home automation. So, uh, we've actually, because of our experience and, and gleaning, you know, 
new technology and information and ideas from each project that we work on, we've created almost an architectural checklist you know, mm -hmm. that we like to provide our clients and actually the design team and architects that we work with. Mm -hmm. And I know that they probably have one in-house, but it's it's nice to, you know, bring the design team early on the project to think these things through. And on that checklist, it's a, almost a questionnaire mm -hmm. for the architects to review with the clients saying, okay, so we're in Florida, there are gonna be hurricanes. Would you like a generator? I would say 99% mm -hmm. of the homes that we've built have generators Seems on them. Sensible. <laughs> How big does that generator need to be? Do you want it to run your whole home if the you know power goes out mm -hmm. during a storm? Or are what are your priorities? Yeah. Uh, you know, so there are things like that that we have to take early on into consideration to include into the plans because then you might run into an issue, which happens. It's custom home building. Uh, you know, an owner might decide you know last minute that they want to you know go a different direction or change something, which change is inevitable mm -hmm. it'll happen <laughs> i mean actually we just kind of had a, a yeah. pretty significant change happen you know, on one of it, our projects it's uh <laughs> yeah it's 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 really um it's really interesting you know in, cu in custom home building um you know we're very accustomed to people you know kind of changing sure. things on the fly we don't look for it but we're not you know um we're not opposed to it but we're, we're a yeah. can do yeah we're a yeah. can do company yeah. that's for sure um but we we, we had a we had a uh, one recently where a client, um, you know, d decided at the at uh, as we were getting ready to pour the slab on a um, guest uh, uh, guest suite. Okay, this is all up in the air on piling. Wow. Um, and uh, right as we were getting ready to do this, they they decided to turn this entire guest suite uh, from a, a basically a guest house. It's like a 1200 square foot or so guest house mm -hmm. turn it into an open air pavilion so you mm -hmm. know those kind of things that's a shift <laughs> yeah it's, it was a big shift yeah. and um the main that's issue <laughs> with that was that we had to change the the height of the slab which required you know structural input which you know but it's it's amazing you know uh i i, I would you know the, the reason I, that i like to bring this up is because you know uh, while we, you know, we bring a lot of good things, you know, to the table from a design standpoint, we, we always kind of like, we love that input from our clients mm -hmm. and we love that our clients are looking at our, their projects this way because, you know, this is their home. If they, if they see something like that, we want to know about it and we want to be able to react and get them exactly what they're looking for. And, sure. you know, it was, it was an interesting thing. I mean, we caught that curveball at the very last minute and we, and we kind of ran with it. I was really impressed with, um, with our, with our people that we were able to, to accommodate that. Yeah. And I'm sure it must have turned out absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, it's in the, it's in the process right now. We've, yeah. we've, uh, we're getting to a point where we're going to, we're going to get, we're going to get caught up to that curveball, but it's all move in the right direction. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> so what other choices are there maybe? Cause I mean, obviously I'm, I'm aware as most people would be about like fixtures, paint, flooring, you know, I mean, are, are, what other big decisions are, are there maybe that, that a customer could make, or maybe just choose to outsource it is honestly, I probably would. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I really, um, you know, one of the things that I think our, that, our, that our clients, uh, really like about working with us and, and we are, are a little bit, um, probably different from most contractors in this way is that we kind of, we like to be sort of a single point of accountability and, and a touch point for, for our clients so mm -hmm. that they, you know, they can communicate, uh, information to, you know, to us. And then we kind of disperse it, uh, amongst the team where it needs to go, mm -hmm. you know, um, they, there are always going to be communication channels between the architect and the interior designer. Um, I bring that up because most of them will pretty much all, uh, all of our clients in recent years have brought uh, their their uh, preferred interior designer um, okay. to the table, mm -hmm. and um, I will say that an inter a good interior designer brings a lot of value to you know to a project. Sure, tremendous. Um, makes the pr process. Uh, you know, you look at you look at the idea of of picking out these things in, in your home. And I, th I don't think a, a lot of people realize how much needs to be selected. I, it's, yeah, it's a it's big, a, it's a lot, a lot of um, decisions. So I said, I'd probably outsource most of it myself once I had someone I, I trust, you know, cause yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a job. <laughs> it is. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a huge job. Mm -hmm. And you know, not only that, that it's a huge job, but you also have people that, 
this is this is what they do if mm-hmm. you it, it, uh, it's what they do day in and day out they know how to do it they know how to communicate that information to us which is huge the, the right. flow of information on a custom project um, if there's any sort of you know blockage in that flow it's it's it can really uh, begin to cost a project um, time Some and time and, yeah and you know Which nobody time money is wants to yeah. delay getting yeah. into their beautiful new home <laughs> so um, we really are have been fortunate to to work with some really really uh, talented people and uh, I, I you know I would just say you know it's it's uh, the way that an interior designer um, uh, kind of gets up to speed with a client's vision mm-hmm. it's it's fun to watch mm-hmm. you know jackie's um taking part in a lot of uh, those meetings and kind of helps me um you know corral that information and and get it into our office in the way that we need it sure and uh yeah it's <laughs> it's, it's 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 good to work with an interior designer but of course you know yeah. then again too we have clients that choose to do it on their own and and um they you know, most of them do a pretty good job with it. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that if that's I mean, my, my wife, for example, she designed most everything in our yeah. office here, which uh, she enjoys and she, doesn't really she have did a an formal job. Well, have background come to our office. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and the interior is one thing, but I was um, I, I, I was at a property that you've completed recently on Longboat Key, which um, on the exterior, I thought was amazing the way that it turned out where the dock essentially came up to the same level as the seawall cap and, and essentially looked like a extension of, of the property where, um, you know, that I thought was really innovative. Yeah. I haven't seen that, that, you know, accomplished very often before. And now of course, custom docks are a big part of the whole, you know, the whole overall project. And most of your homes are, are generally waterfront homes. Do, do you do much of anything that's not on the water? Most of what I've seen is generally all, all been on the water. Or, yeah yeah uh in our sort of 43rd year and we probably built seven homes that aren't uh waterfront at this Mm -hmm. point Mm -hmm. um it's it's really kind of what we're known for and what we're sought Mm -hmm. out for that was Um, my perception right but i I figured i'd ask (laughs) yeah yeah you know and there's a lot that modest (laughs) yeah i mean there's there's a lot that comes with it you know i uh i've been you know uh i've been working um in this in our company uh you know of course it was started by my father but i've been working in our com- company since i was you know 13 years old i you know i started out on the job sites and it's it's interesting to me um to, you know because i grew up in it you kind of have you kind of have this vision that this is the way that all people you know sort of do it and mm-hmm. until i you know walk on other you know, construction sites and see, sort of see the pitfalls, uh, uh, that they, that they fall into. Uh, and I have, I've gotten the opportunity to walk on a, on a few, you understand what that experience and knowledge that's gleaned, you know, from dedicating yourself to this, you know, to, to this, um, niche for so long, mm-hmm. you know, what, what it really brings to a, to the table for a client. And, Absolutely. um, it's, it's, it's neat to experience that. Yeah. Um, I'm proud of, you know, that knowledge that we bring. I'm proud of what we do. I'm proud of our team and, uh, you know, the knowledge that they bring to the table. I mean, it's, it's really, you know, the service we provide is special. <clears throat> well, Absolutely. this is, I mean, without, you know, not giving it its full weight that's due this is your life's work and this is Mm. your father's life's work and it's truly what you are passionate about and i I might not have been on the perone team for all 43 years or (laughs) or even you know the 26 plus years that you've been doing it um but in in the time that i've been there i have really absorbed so much energy and excitement and passion from you and your father and and it's neat to watch you bring that to the table and interact with our clients and get them excited Mm because it can you know it can be a little daunting but it's not it doesn't have to be yeah it it (laughs) certainly doesn't it's exciting this is a time that should be relished and we do everything in our power uh at perone to to ensure that the process every stage our clients feel fully supported and fully heard and fully informed yes and know that they have them as an advocate and it's stemming from that passion and Mm -hmm. that respect for 
what we understand as to be one of the greatest privileges to build something so personal for some incredible, like you said yeah. earlier, extraordinary people. I mean, I pinch myself every day that I've been involved with this company because I get to work with some incredible influential people that have made lasting impacts on our world. And now I get to help build a custom mm -hmm. home unique to them and, and, and get inside their mind. And it's, it's just so <laughs> yeah, much fun. It's, it's really neat. The, 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 the clients we get to interact with the, you know, every day they're, they're special people. Absolutely. Um, I got I you have a, uh, you were bringing up that, the doc that yeah, we yeah. did out there on, um, on uh, longboat key. And, uh, there's a funny story behind that, you know, early on, um, and this goes back to the conceptual design, you know, part mm -hmm. of things. So that property, I know you and I have talked about it before, but the, the, the goal of that property was to, um, to be a certain square footage for the client. And right. if he couldn't meet that square footage, he didn't want to buy the property. So early on, we did, we went through that whole process of conceptual kind of design. A, it was a difficult, like a pie yeah. shape yeah. lot. Yeah. It was small. Mm -hmm. It was very mm -hmm. confined. It was, um, but you never, you know, what's important is, uh, num you know, number one for him was to make sure he could get a square footage. But number two, you don't want to do that square footage if the house isn't going to look good. So, sure, of course. you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, those two things went hand in hand what we found out through that exercise was um, the room for the pool was going to be extremely lim limited which forced us to then think about the way that the um, that the pool deck uh, uh, laid out on the property we, we what we realized was if if we maximize the pool then we weren't going to have a lot of room left for the, for the pool deck mm. so now what are we going to do and then um, we had this idea about um, having the the dock run over the seawall and become part of the pool deck, therefore the pool deck becomes bigger, right? Right, right. I didn't realize that's how that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the, it, it, like yeah. It, it was so much that followed, and if we hadn't done that, you know, if we hadn't gone through that exercise early, we would have never known all that. But uh, my my story is. I, I did all of this, uh, or we, we did all this, the, the team, the architect, the landscape architect. Yeah, the landscape architect, we, um, mm -hmm. yeah. We, 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 we went through all of this and we came up with this idea. Um, and I remember, uh, it was funny, and I have to preface this story by saying, I, like, I, I love to dive. I look for every opportunity I can, you know, <laughs> to, get in the to, water. to get in the water. <laughs> so the, the, uh, we got a bathymetric survey back, and it was showing some seagrasses where we wanted to put the dock. And the dock placement was mm -hmm. really important, and I won't mm -hmm. get into all of that. But I got a call from the, the owner who, who I, like, I, I got a kick out of every time I talked to him. He's a really good guy and just really fun to talk to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got a call from him and he's like, Ricky, he's like, I, I don't know about this. You know, I, I don't, I've been out there a lot of times and I've never seen seagrass in this part. And I'm like worried about how that's going to, they're saying that's going to impact where we place the dock. And he's like, I'm really worried about it. He's like, you mind going out there and taking a look at it for me? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, sure, I'll, I'll go take a look <laughs> at it for you. And so I went out there on a Saturday and I brought my dive gear, and and you couldn't really see, yeah, like see very well in the water. That, yeah, yeah, the visibility yeah. was really bad. So I jumped in. I think I had a, a waterproof camera. I took some pictures for him. I was like, "There's no seagrass there." Yeah. Sent it to him. He was so thankful. But like, that's, that's awesome. you know, that's I, I don't do that on every project. But like, you know, that was a special little you know oh, yeah. circumstance where he, you know he was he was really sweating about it. He wanted to know, so I went out there and checked it out for him. But oh, you know, that's, that's fantastic. That's kind of like you know just one of those fun little stories about kind of custom home building. That's well, <laughs> you should, even uh, too, he had a he had a fleet of boats that he wanted to make sure he could accommodate in the dock and early on we even met with his captain yeah and you know understood the size and you know the turning radius of these boats and mm -hmm. and also too this home is correct some of the best views in sarasota right on the bay mm -hmm. but that water that tide that current could be pretty unforgiving yes. you know to the boat so uh just working early on with his captain to understand mm -hmm. how frequently these boats are going to be there you know and and just every little minutia of those boats mm -hmm. they literally built a custom dock not only to accommodate the pool deck and the pool <laughs> which also abutted the structure and turned into this really neat grotto effect yes but to have this epic dock you know <laughs> it's it would to you know live the florida lifestyle mm -hmm. 
So. Well, that's really exciting, and uh, yeah. you could put that on your website that you know we'll we'll dive the we'll yeah. dive for yeah coastal yeah, environment. I've never done surveys. that before, <laughs> so it was fun. it was fun. I, I was happy to do it in the moment. <laughs> that's fantastic. So um, you know, I guess now when you're kind of in this full-fledged construction phase of things and then you know are, are there any considerations as the project's starting to wrap up and you know the your customers are beginning to plan their moves and things I mean um, is there anything that comes to mind about about the finishing part of the process um, yeah you know the the construction part what, what I like to encourage um, to be done you know the planning the planning part takes a while right mm -hmm. the, the plans being drawn um, the permitting that all takes a while. What I like to encourage our clients to do is take advantage of that time and knock out your selections, you know, work mm -hmm. with closely with your interior designer, your architect, get everything selected. So you can kind of sit back and just enjoy the process. Um, yeah. I would say most, most clients wind up doing this, mm -hmm. um, at least to probably like a, like an 80% level where they just have a few things they're working on during the, the build of their home. Yeah. Um, it's 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 uh it's really nice because you really do just get to sit back at that point and and relax and, and watch your home being built we have um some really great communication tools uh for our client and our team that allow us to basically keep keep everybody fully up to date on what's happening on their project mm -hmm. what questions may need to be answered if they're um if there's anything outstanding we may need from them. Right. Um, so we're, one of my big beliefs is, you know, just keeping, keeping everything proactive, keeping communication channels wide open and just making sure everybody's on the same page with things. Right. Um, you know, as we, as we wrap up a project, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're communicating, you know, with our clients about, mm -hmm. um, and the interior designers because they're moving furniture in just, you know, about like what that, when we set a, a, out a schedule at the beginning of a job, um, you know, we, we're accurate with those schedules. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if I if, have, I have heard that about customers that have been working with you. That's very impressive. Yeah. That's not thank necessarily you. the case. Yeah. these days in all cases <laughs> it's not and yeah. we work hard to to hit that mm -hmm. um you know the last thing <laughs> you know is just talking about being excited about your project nothing kills excitement more than than you know pulling um, up to your job site and not yeah. seeing anybody working yeah, like we never want delays our, yeah, yeah we never want the unexpected delays we never want our clients to feel that way we you know one of the big things we communicate with within our staff is put your put yourself in your client and our client's shoes mm-hmm and really get to, you know, really approach everything about this project as if, you know, in, in, in our client shoes, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah, we, we're, we're big on that. Do you, do you have anything to add? With well, that? I'm, I mean, I thought you said it very eloquently and we do, we have wonderful systems set up in place where we keep our owners informed, whether they want to be on the site with a beach chair every day and a, you know, <laughs> an iced tea monitoring construction, or if they are all the way across the world and can only check in once a month, um, mm -hmm. either way, we have a system that is appropriate for either scenario. We send out weekly reports with photos, with lists of upcoming selections that are imperative to, you know, th to have for the course of construction and what's been done that week, mm -hmm. what's coming up, you know, the following week and uh, you know, just what overall what to expect. So, you know, without even having to talk to us, which, but I enjoy that part. So, you know, <laughs> we welcome that. Uh, they will know everything that's happening on their job site. You know, we fly drones to take some, you know, our photos, mm -hmm. just everything that we can do, you know, to make sure that, you know, not a single day goes by that we're not, you know, giving them some sort of comforting yeah. feedback that right. things are moving forward. <laughs> you know, this yeah. has been mm -hmm. purchased. This is on its way. So, yeah, yeah. I always, I always, uh, you know, I always tell our, our um, people, you know, confidence yeah. is a hard thing to gain and it's an easy thing to lose. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. um, very well you know, said. We, we're, we work very hard every day to maintain that. But, you know, it's it's all about, um, you know, our, 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 our push. And, I, and we talk about this uh, pretty consistently is, you know, we, we want this process. I mean, we want this process to be fun for our clients. We want it to be fun for us. Sure. Like we, we, mm -hmm. It's something we truly enjoy. The creative aspect of it, I, I 
I love, you know, I love working with our clients to pull that vision out of them. I, we talked about that project earlier where we were trying to settle in on an architectural style. I, I mean, I, uh, I think my exclamation when, when I walked into Jackie's office and she told me that I was like, yes, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a kind of a long process to get there. And it was felt good to kind of like help people, you know, realize what it was that they were actually after. Of course. And it's inspiring to create this vision now that everybody's made a decision to progress forward with. And I mean, to me, it, it has to be fun for, for you and for the customers to, to create these masterpieces. It's yeah. uh, pretty incredible. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the rubs that, um, that sometimes our customers run into on, you know, more like run of the mill type of construction, of course, is like the punch out list at the very end. And I know yeah. that you guys, um, as you said, it's confidence is difficult to gain and easy to lose. And it's unfortunate, you know, in, in different scenarios, of course, not not with Perone, but whenever everything has gone reasonably well until the very end, and then there's a little bit of frustration there. And I know as more like a, a concierge is an understatement type, type of a builder, you know, I'm just curious what your disciplines or the way that you, you know, kind of finish up with a project in terms of like punch out and all of the finer details. I know that you have a, a bit unique of a way that you approach these things. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we certainly do. Um, you know, w one of the, uh, one of the things that we, um, uh, th that I always, uh, instill, up, you know, upon our, our staff is the idea of in, in process review. So, mm -hmm. um, we're under, we're understanding, <clears throat> you know, not only the product that's being installed, we're understanding, you know, h how it's being installed. Um, we're reading, you know, manufacturers installation instructions. We're reading the manuals. We're, we're understanding all aspects of these things that we're putting into our home. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that, but we're working with the tradesmen, putting them in to, we're working on the layout with them. Mm -hmm. we're, t we're, we're basically kind of building a box for everybody to sort of work within. We're, we're laying out expectations. So I, I say all that to, because it, leads to a punch list that's very small. I won't say there's ever, there's, there's my time doing this. There's never been a zero punch list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but what we do internally is we create our own punch list. Of course. Um, right. We, that's the, that's the big difference. <laughs> yeah. We, we create our own punch list, um, which is typically not that, you know, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, but we create our own punch list, uh, before we ever do that walkthrough with mm -hmm. our clients. Um, mm -hmm at which point, you know, they do, uh, they do a punch list. And when they do a punch list, they can hold back a hundred, 150% of the value of any of those punch list items. Sure. Um, sort of, you know, supposed to be like an incentive to get these items done. So mm -hmm. we knock them out really quickly. We, and what we do with our punch list is we set up one day, you know, may, it might need to be two or depending on what's on the punch list. Of course. Yeah. One day where we come out, and just knock it out, get it mm -hmm. done, and we're, we're done with the punch list. We look right. at everything, make sure the owner's happy, and uh, call it a day. Yeah, well, yeah. I've heard nothing but uh, glowing reviews about the wind-up process, and <laughs> and then, you know, people are, of course, they're excited. They want to get into their home, and, and you don't want to ever, you know, see their enthusiasm or joy diminished with frustrating little things at the end, which I know that you guys are, are really great at being attentive to. Yeah. So um, you mentioned um, a, a very specific number of homes that were not on the water, um, seven, seven homes. Yeah. I'm curious. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do you, do you know offhand how many homes altogether are, are on the water? We tried to, we tried to count. It's, it's hundreds. Yeah. We, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I would have, uh, we probably should have started keeping count at some 43 point. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny. You know, we, uh, we, our goal has never been the builder that's building a, a, right. a bunch of homes every year. You know, we, we seek out, we seek out unique projects. Mm -hmm. Um, we seek out, you know, projects, uh, um, you know, associated with, you know, a good team, you, you know, a good architect, a good, uh, great, uh, owner. And, um, you know, uh, we, we, we like for our days, you know, to be enjoyable. We like for our, um, f for the product, um, to be proud of the product we mm -hmm. produce at the end of the day. And, um, you know, in order for that to happen, those, you know, those things need to be there. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we average in the realm of six to eight homes every year, mm -hmm. you know, so I have to imagine that we're, you know, we're in excess of, 
you know, probably 200 and, you know, 200 and or so homes at this point yes. that we've built mm -hmm. in our, in our time here. Right. And keep in mind, we're, we're very honored to be invited to some of the most iconic, you know, landmark homes in Sarasota and Southwest Florida. And so those are typically very complex structures. And with that being said, like, you know, what Ricky said, you know, six to eight homes that we have at any given time is usually our bandwidth because anything outside of that, mm -hmm. we aren't, we want to make sure that we maintain that level of quality and, mm -hmm. and communication and oversight. Right. And, and so it, it really hasn't ever been, you know, our strategy to take on more projects. In fact, over the last few years, we've turned away so many beautiful projects that yes, does it, it kind of pains me to sometimes drive by and see another builder sign and see him go up because that, you know, you really want to be involved and, and you really maybe like that owner or, mm -hmm. you know, mesh well with them. But at the end of the day, you know, we are stewards to our clients and, mm -hmm. and we put them, you know, and their needs paramount. And so we know our limitations as far as maintaining that quality and, and not yeah. taking on too much at any yeah. given time. Well, I, I love that you know exactly who you are and what the mission is, because I'm sure you could build quite a lot more houses. You get a lot more opportunities than that, but you stay really committed to your vision. And, and I think that it's evident in the product, the, the end result in terms of not only just how, how the finished product turns out, but just the, the, uh, the joy for the customer and, and the, and you know, the fun that you're having as you create these um, very unique homes. So I think yeah. there's a lot to be said for working on things that are inspiring and that being in alignment with, with your personal mission and, and vision for the company and, and staying really committed to that. So I think that's yeah, really thanks, good, Robert. Robert. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Is there anything else that comes to mind that you'd like to share with customers about uh, how exciting it is to build their new home? <laughs> yeah, you know, um, I, I guess, you know, in speaking about the number of homes that we do at, at any given time, and, and I say six to eight, that's kind of an average. Sure. Um, you know, at times we may be less. It, it really depends on the, um, a, a lot on the scale of projects that we're involved, you know, involved course, with. Of course, right. Um, so, some of them can be uh, very large. I mean, I, I think our largest home is, was in excess of 20,000 square feet. That's so quite a home, you know, that's, uh, <laughs> you know, when you think about, when you think about that, it's, it's mm -hmm. significant in terms of, you know, how much bandwidth it, that, that can, uh, uh, occupy. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, I, uh, having said that, you know, our, we, we don't, our, we don't have any, um, our litmus test, you know, for, for a project is just whether, you know, whether we will be, have been proud to have been part of it at the end of the day. And, um, you know, whether it, get, it comes with a good team and a good client. Um, mm -hmm. so we've, I've, we've done projects as small as, uh, I mean, really neat projects, but as small as a thousand square feet, wow. um, you know, that, that we're very proud of and, mm -hmm. we're you know, very happy to have, um, built them. So, mm -hmm. I just say that because, you know, some, some people look at our company and say, well, you know, these guys, they, they only build these massive homes. And that's right. what I want to, what I want our company to be known for is that we, we build, you know, beautiful homes for, you know, for, for great clients. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's an important, important point for sure. Yeah. How about you, Jacqueline, anything coming to mind that uh, you'd like to add? <laughs> well, um, you know, we touched briefly on the fact that we, do you have a fine home maintenance program for after the homes are built? That's also it's really important to, to mention again. Yes. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. uh, once they move in and they get to live out their, their dream space, you know, a lot of times, you know, they might have a home up North or, mm -hmm. you know, they come in for the, the warm, beautiful sun, sunshine when they're gone, you know, keeping these homes up is, is quite a bit of work. And, and we're proud to have Conserva fine home stewardship, which is, our maintenance division. And uh, it also handles like small remodel projects here and there. Say we built a home 10 years later, they, you know, want to add an addition. Um, that's something that Conservo would, would take on for them. So we don't just, you know, hand the keys off at the end of a build and, and wish them well and, and say, enjoy your home. We are very much involved. We build really strong connections with our, our clients. And 
I, we've built as many as four homes for the same client. And now it's funny because we say 43 years. Well, uh, Richard, when he founded the company, is now seeing that we're building for some of our clients' children and now even dare I say grandchildren, I think he'll wow. uh, shoot me if he hears me say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's impressive. But though, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really neat. And so, you know, it goes back to that relationships and trust and, and then mm -hmm. being there for, you know, years to come after they've lived in their home and, mm -hmm. and help them care for it. I and maintain that its value. It was a very smart idea to create a pathway for your customers to be able to enjoy their home more and not have any stress and, you know, just have peace of mind that it could be there's there's an easy path for maintenance that, uh, you know, just helps them enjoy more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was just going, going back to putting ourselves in our, our client's shoes and, you know, understanding the way that they, you know, typically use their homes and what, what may be important to them. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, if someone would like to begin the process of uh, building their custom dream home on the water, uh, how should they reach out? Should they reach out to maybe you, Jacqueline, or uh, what's the, visit the website? Yeah, <laughs> please share. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say either one of us, uh, give us a call. Uh, phone is always best. You know, just call us up. We're happy to take your call. And uh, what's wonderful is, you know, I'm directly involved in the process, but uh, Rich and Ricky, and Ricky being the president of the company, uh, you think as the principals of the company that they might take more of a, a backseat approach. That is absolutely not the case. Uh, usually whenever we have a, a prospective client looking to have us build for them, one of the first calls that they get is from Rich or Ricky to kind of, you know, get excited, talk mm -hmm. about their vision, what's next. Uh, and so that, I think that's also unique to our company. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll make sure to put the um, contact info in our notes with the post that we make here. Yeah. And uh, Peronconstruction.com, you can find us there, too. Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for coming in and having this conversation. And, um, you know, we're always thrilled whenever we have customers that are seeking a, a just incredible, unique um, home that is one of a kind that just has the absolute finest of standards of just finishes and is just a real statement piece. We're always, a, as a company, very, very enthusiastic to recommend Perone Construction. So yeah. appreciate you guys and the good work that you do around town. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time today, Ricky. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> thank having you, us, Robert. Thank you, Robert. <laughs>